Everyone uses the concept of a moral subject, but do we know what we're talking about? I am Rodrigo Gim, an anthropologist and social critic, and this is Critique with Nietzsche and Foucault. What do you mean by a moral subject? Please comment below the video so I can enter into a conversation with you. If you believe thinking is fundamental in your life and you think you can discuss thought, then subscribe to this channel because that is our task here. Today we will continue the issue of subjectivation and truth that we started in the previous two videos. In this series, we started in a first video where I established Foucault's concept of subjectivation, a concept that helps us understand the processes by which subjects are produced, constructed in history. For Foucault, telling a history of the changes in subjectivation processes is telling how we got to the present time. Foucault has always written with a view to interfering in the ways of thinking, acting, and being, and the institutions of his own days, his actuality. When Foucault went to study the care of the self in ancient Greece, he did so to shed light on our actuality. I say our actuality because even today we are within the dominance of knowing yourself, know thyself. And it is about that dominance and how it works nowadays that I want to talk to you about today. We have seen that the processes of subjectivation have gone from taking care of yourself to know yourself. But this knowing yourself has undergone changes throughout history. If in the past the subjects had to look inward for their purification, that is to eliminate evil in themselves, and if this purification was through the confession of evil to an authority, to the priest who taught the path of purification, Today, many subjects still perform these pr practices, but we have a new reality of secularization, of Christian secularization of these Christian practices. Today, the subjects look within themselves, not necessarily seeking the evil within, but many of them seek only their good within. They seek self-affirmation of themselves as subjects of the good, who want the good, who know deep down that what good is and how to do good deeds. And when these subjects make their own confession, they make that confession publicly, no longer necessarily to an authority. The good citizen of our day is the self-serving citizen who does not miss a chance to stand publicly as a right, just, and good subject. The secularization of Christian techniques of self has also brought about a radical change in the way the subject builds his self-image. The subject no longer presents himself as a subject of morality, one who carries both good and evil in himself, who is in an internal struggle, but as the good citizen subject, who presents himself as the good in person. Displacement of a good citizen is mine. Foucault never used the term, nor spoke of subjectivation in actuality directly as I am doing here. Foucault has always used genealogy, a look at history, to cause interpretations of the present. I am using the term good citizen because it is a current term today in right-wing groups that influence politics and culture in Brazil. Nietzsche had already pointed to the effects of Christian morality on the production of subjectivation. Says Nietzsche, quote, Morality induces the individual to become a function of the herd and not to attribute value to itself except as a function. Morality is the instinct of the herd in the individual. Nietzsche, Gay Science. This herd instinct comes along with the creation of two ideas that bind the individual to morality and carry his subjectivation as a burden. 
These are the ideas of free will and the idea of finality. Free will attaches the subject to the idea that the world is moralistic and that there, there is a universal right and wrong that this individual must follow. If the individual does not follow them, he is punished in this life or in the next life. Free will is a burden precisely because it always comes with the idea that there are choices in life to make, but only one of them is the right one. Then comes resentment towards others, the world and life itself when things don't happen the way these subjects think they should be. The other idea that comes with morality is that of finality. In it, the subject lives as if he has a clear and unique goal in his life, as if life could only be affirmed if it fits into the mold that the subject himself constructs. And of course, in this way, the subject shows how he himself is already subjected, for every finalism is about living for an, for an ideal, and every ideal is a way of life that acts against life itself, as Nietzsche shows. And if life does not surrender to what the subject of a morality or the subject of free will desires or the finalist subject desires, he quickly falls into resentment against life or bad conscience against, him, against himself, for he has failed. It's not difficult to see how subjectivation in the mode of morality produces the herd. The herd always thinks life owes them something. They don't seek their affirmation as a becoming. The subject as becoming, as relational, as non-moral, as non-finalist, a subject of forces in relation, a subject, a subject that would be incommensurable to himself, is the subject unknown to most subjects in dominant Western and westernized societies today. A subject who is not subjected, at least not in the mode of morality, in the mode of individualization carried out by the free will paradigm and by the imprisonment of finalism, this subject may not even be understood when trying to speak in the present days. Well, people, now I need you to comment, ask on Facebook or YouTube so I can answer you in the next videos. This is an immersion in Nietzsche and Foucault. It's a video conversation where the questions brought by you I bring to the debate and I also bring new questions. See you next Thursday.